David Faraday was in town this week. The wacky golf analyst has a stand-up comedy act called Faraday Off Tour. But behind the humor is a man that struggles with depression. And in a way, the audience is his therapy. The comedy is hard. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just me and a microphone and a chicken for some reason. <laughs> David Faraday is perhaps the most entertaining analyst in all of sports. So it seemed like a natural progression from the fairway to the stage. It's been a, a really sort of cathartic experience for me. Um, I'm terrified before uh, every one of them, <laughs> but uh, it, uh, and I'm terrified during. On this night, Faraday is at the Palace of Fine Arts, spinning yarns of his Irish heritage humor. And generally speaking, you've heard that joke before, but you don't stop them, you're polite and you let them go on and you laugh at the end, you think, oh, that was a good one. Meanwhile, you're thinking, there's three minutes of my life, I'm never gonna get back. <laughs> the Northern Ireland native had 10 professional wins as a golfer before retiring in 1997 and finding his second profession as a golf analyst. I mean, it's difficult to think of you as a, as a loser, but hey, you're a loser, and good luck next well, week. thank you very much, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Tiger. Then came a show appropriately called Faraday. Legs or breasts? Breasts. We're kind of like a broadcasting accident looking for somewhere to happen. Oh, it's not stuck, it's just bleeding. Oh, ready? Mm-hmm. Ta-da! You get away with asking questions that I could never get away. If I called Bob, uh, Bobby Knight a lunatic to his <laughs> face, I would get my butt kicked. How, how do you get away with some of the stuff you do? I, I think... Um, I ask questions from a position of weakness, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it's yeah. not from an ivory tar or anything like that. I mean, I have so many faults and uh, the chances are if I'm giving somebody a hard time about something, it's because I've done it myself. Why were you such a f***ing lunatic at times? Because I absolutely <laughs> wanted to win. That's f***ing why. And that was a dumb f question. There are a lot of people that, that think that you're a world class It's true. Yeah. But it's true. I mean, does that bother you? Mr. Trump, a lot of people character or see you as a a-hole. Yes. And, and you came at it a way where he couldn't personally attack you, but the question you were asking, what was his response? He said, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Faraday has interviewed presidents, actors, and any A-list celebrity you could possibly imagine. Even the warrior Stephen Curry put his scratch handicap on display for Faraday. What an amazing uh, young man. I mean, really, it's wonderful when, when you do something with somebody and, he, and that person is exactly who you think they are. Um, you know, he has such a nice, appealing... Um, uh, I don't know, aura about him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's that work ethic uh, that he has. He's so, it's like watching a dolphin play basketball. Um, and, uh, you know, to spend a few, uh, a few minutes with him, you know, a couple of hours, um, it was, that was one of the highlights of, uh, of, my, uh, of my show yeah. so far. He's a one handicap. Yeah, and he's a really good player. Faraday's favorite episode is perhaps the most sobering show in a very literal sense. It featured Tom Watson, and it was a wake-up call. There was a very dark period uh, of my life. I was doing a made-for-TV thing with, uh, with Tom and Jack Nicholas. Uh, they were playing each other, and it was in uh, Prince Edward Island in the Maritimes up in Canada. And um, I was at the, I'd undiagnosed at that point, you know, uh, bipolar, but I was very, very depressed. Um, I had a bottle of whiskey in my room and a bag of pills. And all I could think of was to get back uh, back to that. But I had to interview these these two golfers, and I'd interviewed Jack, and uh, I started interviewing Tom, and he just put his hand over the lens and said, "You're not well, are you?" And I said, "No, I'm not." <laughs> um, I said, "How do you know?" He said, "I can see it in your eyes." And I asked him, "What do you see?" And he said, "My reflection." And um, Jack uh, had his G4 there, and he flew me. Uh, and Tom, you know, to Kansas City, and I spent a few days with Tom there, you know, going through what he went through. And, uh, you know, I, I was sober for 10 years. I had a minor hiccup, uh, you know, a year or so ago. 
I'm back. You uh, obviously were able to overcome it. I know that you had a tragedy this past summer. Mm. Uh, how how do you deal with that? How difficult was that? Knowing that you went through the a similar circumstance. Yeah, I, I lost uh, my son um, on his 29th birthday uh, about uh, three and a half months ago uh, to cocaine, and uh, he was a little too much like his father. Uh, he struggled with it. Uh, you know, and uh, the bipolar side of it as well, you know, for, for many years. So uh, it's been a very difficult thing to, to deal with. Uh, but, you know, you put one foot after another and uh, take it one day at a time. I take my life 20 minutes at a time, to be honest with you. <laughs> Faraday says his shows are therapeutic. He speaks of comedy almost in the way he deals with life. Do you feel... Uh right away the sense okay these jokes are going to work with this audience yes or, or do you notice sometimes the other way oh yeah yeah it, sometimes you know they work sometimes they don't you know and, and the trick uh with comedy is you know everybody goes into a hole uh, from time to time it's being able to get yourself out is is the uh right. is the key i was able to watch an hour of faraday's show he was funny self-deprecating and of course very appreciative of those who came to see him We'll be back with this week's They Set It Award after this.